this will probably be the only video today. I'm playing golf this afternoon. Not going to have time to prepare and upload another video today. Might get one out tomorrow. I'm not sure yet. It's the week of Thanksgiving. Typically, this is a slow news week. It's been a slow news week this week. Hasn't been a lot of controversy, which is typical. Holiday week, most people aren't focused on negativity right now, and that's the way it should be. So we might get one out tomorrow. If not, I'll take a little break, and we'll be back on Friday. But as for today, we're going to get into Shikari Richardson. We have not talked about Shikari Richardson in a couple of months. Reason being, she's no longer relevant. She no longer generates headlines. If I remember correctly, the last time we talked about Shikari Richardson, I talked about the rapid downfall of her career. This is a 21-year-old young woman who was given the keys to the kingdom for free. Many people viewed her as a victim when she was kicked out of the Olympics for smoking a little bit of weed. At the time, I came to her defense. Now, I didn't feel sorry for her. I didn't feel bad she was kicked out of the Olympics. She knew the rules. She knew that she would be drug tested. She knew when she would be drug tested. Now, I didn't agree with the IOC suspending her over weed, something that is legal throughout most of the country and was legal in Oregon, where Shikari Richardson was drug tested. But she knew the rules. She knew the consequences. And she smoked weed anyway. Shikari Richardson handled the fallout from that with humility and grace, I thought. And that's the reason that I defended her. Many of you didn't agree with me. Shikari Richardson did not blame the IOC. She didn't blame her situation growing up or anything like that. She took accountability for her actions. She accepted the consequences. That is rare nowadays. It tells me Shikari Richardson was likely raised well likely had good parents. The problem is everything that has happened afterwards. Shikari Richardson is a prime example of too much too soon. She was given fame and fortune before she accomplished anything. She let it go to her head. Her ego became out of control. She started talking shit on social media during the Olympics. Her big comeback race, I believe, Early September, or it might have been late August, it was broadcast nationally on NBC, and this was the beginning of the end. Shikari Richardson spent the weeks leading up to this race bragging on social media on how she was going to smoke everyone. She shows up, completely unprepared in my opinion, finishes in last place. America does not support losing. In order for an athlete to stay relevant, they've got to win. But the country does have patience. If America likes and respects someone, they will tolerate losing at least for a little while. I mean, you have to win eventually. But America does not expect perfection. However, delusion is not supported. People don't support arrogance and disrespect. Shikari Richardson finishing last place that was not the beginning of the end of her career. It's what she did afterwards that sealed her fate. <laughs> this is one race. <laughs> I'm not done. <laughs> you know what I'm capable of. Count me out if you want to. Talk all the shit you want. Because I'm here to stay. I'm not done. I'm the sixth fastest woman in this game ever. And can't nobody ever take that from me. Those 17 seconds ruined any chance Shakari Richardson had for redemption. First of all, she shouldn't have been interviewed to begin with. Since when does the person who finishes dead last get a nationally televised post-race interview? And second, when highly respected athletes lose, there's a level of decorum, sportsmanship that people expect. When Tom Brady loses a big game, he doesn't make excuses. He doesn't blame other people. He holds himself accountable. Drew Brees, same thing. Patrick Mahomes, LeBron James. They don't get defensive. They don't tell you what they're going to do next time. Most of the time, people who talk a lot of shit, talk about what they're going to do, can't back it up. Shikari Richardson cannot back it up. Oh, she's a great shit talker. She's great at clapping back at her haters, as she likes to say. But when it comes time for her to perform, when it comes time to go out and get results, Shikari Richardson fades into the background. 
Now, I give you that brief history to kind of highlight how far Shikari Richardson has fallen. For two or three months, she was headline news damn near on a daily basis. Now, one thing I can say about her during that time, she never involved herself with social justice, woke politics. She remained apolitical. Until now. Shakari Richardson took to Instagram to share her opinion on the Kyle Rittenhouse not guilty verdict. Now, you can say what you want about Kyle Rittenhouse, the fact that he should not have been on the streets of Kenosha that night with a gun as a 17-year-old kid. I agree, he should not have been down there, but he was. That's really a moot point, though, at least in terms of his murder case. If you look at the facts of his case and remove the emotion and politics, this was clearly a case of self-defense. It was not a case of white privilege. But Shakari Richardson, she doesn't believe that. She compared Kyle Rittenhouse to Tamir Rice and Trayvon Martin. Those two cases have nothing to do with Kyle Rittenhouse. But you know facts. They don't matter to social justice warriors. The only thing that matters here is the optics. A white kid got away with murder and two young black men lost their lives because they don't have the same privilege. Shakari Richardson jumped on the woke bandwagon, trying to spin Kyle Rittenhouse into a racial case, even though he killed two white dudes. I'm not interested, though, in what Shakari Richardson said. I'm interested in why she is saying it. Why is someone who remained apolitical throughout her rise to stardom why is she suddenly involving herself in woke politics? In her post, Shakari Richardson said that she was black before she was ever an athlete. Other than stating the obvious, I mean, clearly she was black before becoming an athlete. But other than that, this is a virtue signal. Shakari Richardson is trying to garner support for herself. But why? Why is she doing this now? Because Shakari Richardson knows it's over. Her 15 minutes of fame are gone. As a track and field athlete, she will never recapture the notoriety that she was given freely this summer. America does not give a shit about track and field. Shakari Richardson rose to fame as a sympathetic figure, but that sentiment can only hold you over for so long. You have to take that and build on it. Instead, Shakari Richardson squandered it. So now, she is taking a page out of the Megan Rapino book. She's attempting to use social justice to enhance her own platform. I mean, it worked for Megan Rapino, right? Megan Rapino was never famous as a soccer player. She follows the lead of Colin Kaepernick, essentially becomes the female version of Colin Kaepernick, and Megan Rapino becomes a household name. There have been many to try to replicate this strategy. Gwen Berry. Raven Saunders, the entire NWSL, Sue Bird, the WNBA. It hadn't worked. It hadn't worked. And it's not working for Shikari Richardson either. Had she done this same thing two, three months ago, every media outlet in the country would have covered the story. It would have been news seconds after she posted it to Instagram. Shikari Richardson posted about Kyle Rittenhouse on November 20th, last Saturday. 48 hours passes. Nothing from the media. Finally, Monday afternoon, Yahoo Sports felt bad enough for Shikari Richardson that they posted a quick little two-minute blurb about it. One outlet covered this story. One. If you Google her name, the bulk of stories about Shikari Richardson are weeks, months old. Check it out for yourself. Check it out for yourself. Shikari Richardson trying to use the social justice movement to rebuild her platform. If she truly cared about social justice, if she was a real SJW, how come she wasn't showing her support for the SJWs in the Olympics? How come she wasn't supporting Megan Rapinoe, Sue Bird, fighting for equal pay for women? Where was her support for Gwen Berry, fighting racial injustice? Shakari Richardson didn't give a shit about social justice until she thought it could benefit her which is par for the course for social justice warriors. They don't really believe what they promote. They do it for the money. Unfortunately for Shikari Richardson, she didn't strike while the iron was hot. Hell, she didn't even need woke politics to make money. 
Megan Rapino needed it to get rich. All Shikari Richardson had to do was remain humble, ignore the bullshit on social media, and she would have been fine. Instead, she couldn't keep her damn mouth shut, and she ruined a potential multi-million dollar career in the process. All right, let me know what you guys think of the downfall of Shikari Richardson and the media completely ignoring her now because she's no longer relevant. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good Thanksgiving.